The Church TechCast Screencast Show is sponsored in part by viewers like you. Head over to patreon.com slash paulallencliff, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-a-u-l-a-l-a-n-c-l-i-f to support the show for as little as one dollar a month. That's less than a nickel a show. So head on over and help make these screencasts happen on a weekly basis. Well, hi everyone. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. Let me go ahead and put that up. And I'm your host today, and I'd love for you to join the conversation. So the last couple of weeks, these screencast ideas have come from people who have had questions about ProPresenter. Now, I won't always stick with ProPresenter, so if you've got Photoshop questions, if you've got video editing questions, um, any of those things, feel free to ask them. Head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. You'll find all my contact information. It's a blog post, so you can leave a comment there if you just want to do that. Maybe you're more of a phone person, one 763 3246 or one eight seven seven pod echo is the phone number listed there, and that's how you can get in touch with me. Or uh, you can drop me a line on email, Paul, my first name of course, at trinitydigitalmedia.com, and that will get in touch with me. Or if you're on Twitter, my username is under my face here on the screen, Paul Allen Cliff, P A U L A L A N C L I F. Shortest way to spell all three of those because it's for Twitter. Makes perfect sense. So let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. So this actually comes off of uh, a question I received from a friend of mine. Uh, Daniel is, <clears throat> he is uh, a guy that goes to my church. He works uh, in our, well, he he volunteers for the live web stream, and so he uses ProPresenter just as I do. And uh, he was asking how he could import certain backgrounds and not all subfolders. So, Daniel, this one's for you. Uh, basically, at the bottom of the window, you can't actually see it because I've got this scaled about as small as I can get it and about as big as I can get it given the resolution that I'm streaming at here. Um, if you go, you see my mouse on the bottom here, if you go directly down from that there is a plus sign. Uh, now this is with backgrounds selected right here. So I select backgrounds and then I go immediately down from the first thumbnail and there is a little plus sign. So when I click that plus sign, it should bring up a window. Ah, look, there's an open dialog. So I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. So I, I've already chosen the drive. Now, in this case, there are plenty of subfolders for me to choose. So I could just select that subfolder and click open. But I don't want to do that because if I select this archive folder, then it's going to get uh, everything in that folder that ProPresenter can use. So it's going to get uh, the JPEGs, it's going to get the subfolder that includes more JPEGs and PSDs, it's going to get uh, blog pics, etc. I did, and I don't want to do that. So you don't want to do it with the folder highlighted. Um, and just a quick bit of navigation about OS X. You see these buttons up here? The buttons up towards the top are different view options. So we can uh, view it if I click on this. Let's hope uh, ProPresenter doesn't uh, shut down. Sometimes it does. Okay. If I do that, I can get just the thumbnails. That's this uh, like 4x4 four four grid. If I click the lines, that gives me, 
again, just the single window, but then it has these guys at the top, which are labels, so that I can organize them by name, date modified, size, kind. This is going to come in handy a little bit later. Uh, then there's this view. This is the one that I was using earlier. And finally, there's the cover flow view. So I'll show that to you, but in this case, we're not going to be using it. Just a second while that loads up. I'm actually doing quite a lot on my computer here. So you'll see that, that kind of looks like iTunes uh, with CoverFlow. And um, I can either scroll this way or I can go this way. So that's what you would do. So depending on what you're doing, you might actually want to go to this list view, the second one over, because once you do that and you're in the appropriate um, folder, in fact, I don't want to be in this blog pic, so I'm going to go back to archive, and then um, in archive, you'll see that I've got several different types of media files. I've got QuickTimes right here. I've got uh, these uh, PNGs that are screenshots. I've got an MP4 here, and I've got some JPEGs. Well, in this case, I only want to import the JPEGs, so I'm going to click on the first JPEG, and I actually have some choices. What I could do is I could um, actually go above that, click and scroll down, or drag down rather, and when I do that, I get a range of these. So that's probably what I would do in the case that Daniel's talking about, is I would select a range. Now to make sure that I don't get the subfolders as well, I'd make sure that kind over here is selected. Now it could be that when you first open the window, you don't see kind. It could be that, um, just a second, it looks more like this, where you've got the name and then maybe the date modified. In between each of these labels, there's a vertical line. It's really kind of hard to see, but as you put your mouse over top of it, you should see this double bar, this, arrow, uh, this bar with arrows on either side that allow you to resize that. So when you do that, you should see size and kind and maybe even some more th things show up. And what I would do is I would click on kind and that way you will group together all of your JPEGs in this case. And you can uh, select them that way. Now let's say that you want all of them except for one or two. So I've already selected all these by uh, clicking and dragging. So let's say I didn't want this one that says 8 by 10. So these are actually pictures of my daughters from Christmas. So I'm going to hold down the Command button. Uh, back in the day it was called Open Apple, or if you're looking at your Mac keyboard. I'm doing this on a Mac, by the way. Uh, it's the little Apple icon. If you hold down that and click on one that you've already selected, bam, it unselects it. So that's a good way to do that. Let's say you wanted to do just the opposite and you only wanted to select, say, two or three. So what you could do is uh, click the first one, then click another one, and you can see that as I'm holding down Command, I can select any number of ones that I want. So instead of the entire range and unselecting, I click Command to select. And Command is a toggle, so if I am not quite sure whether I want it or not, ooh, I made a mistake, I don't want uh, 6029 here, I can click Command. So that enables me to do that. Now once I do that, I will click Open, and it should open all of these files for me. It'll take just a second because, as I say, I've got a whole lot of stuff going on in the background 
here on my computer, which um, doesn't quite like it. I'm nearly 100% on my CPU usage. So you can see underneath it has added those. And so there we go. So adding these as backgrounds, you'll see that I, uh, on Angels We Have Heard on High up here, I have this background down here chosen. If I wanted to choose that background, I could just click it and then all subsequent um, lyrics will be over top of it. Notice here that the black is actually clear, so um, it just clears out the lyrics that I have. But that doesn't mean that I can't. Uh, let's go with this one, and I'm going to click and drag it up here. And so let's say I was, I had that background. Now I have this slide and this changes the background for all subsequent slides until I have a different uh, background selected. So let's say right here, I put this background. Then from there on, it's selected from there. Well, let's say that I did this by mistake right here. This, I actually don't want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it. And down here you see it says remove and then colon and then quotation mark and then the name of the file that I want to remove. That doesn't remove it completely. It doesn't put it in the trash. It just removes it from this particular slide. So I'm going to click remove there and so it's back the way it was. I click on this black one and it should be the case, there we go, that it just clears out the lyrics. So that's how that works. Now it could be that you have specific backgrounds for specific weeks and you just need to get rid of some old ones or something like that. Um, I'm a big fan of using series specific backgrounds so you wouldn't necessarily want those in your backgrounds folder. So to get rid of those you actually have two choices and uh, each of these does something just a little bit different. So the first choice is, uh, here let me uh, I'm going to hold down command again. Command is your friend. And I'm going to select a bunch of these. And I can actually uh, click and drag. And if I make a mistake, I can continue to hold down command and unclick certain ones and then click certain ones. So it's the same convention as in the Finder. In the dialog box that we were using earlier to import. So I do that and now I can um, press the delete button. Now this is the delete button. This is one thing that I don't agree with on the Macintosh. It's the delete button that's on the same key as the backspace button on a PC. If you've got a full keyboard there's out actually also a delete button to the right of that under the help button near the page up and page down and end and home buttons. That's not the one I want you to do. I want you to do the delete one that's in the same spot as the backspace. So we hit delete and then it pops up this dialog box. Now cancel means oh crud I didn't want to do that. So that's if you did that that's what it would do. Move to trash will delete these uh, off the system. Well, it won't fully delete them, but it'll take them and put them in the trash. So in this case, I don't want to do that. Let's say you were cleaning off your uh, system and you, you did. These were old things you're not going to use again. Uh, you've got them archived somewhere else. If that's the case, move to trash is what you want. If it's not, delete queues is what you want, which that will basically return it to the 
situation it was in before you imported that those. So I'm going to click delete queues. And that takes me back to where I was where I don't have any of these other backgrounds and I have uh, this. Now it doesn't totally undo the work that I, I had because you'll notice that this background is totally different from this background which is the one that was there when we first started this tutorial. But I hope that that gives you just a few little things to play with so that you can uh, manage backgrounds more effectively. I've got another video that I'll link to in the description below that's all about um, when you have a lot of backgrounds and you really need to organize them well. This is one that I recorded last week and it involves using folders here in the video image bin which uh, the folder showed up under this purchase item in the list. So that would enable you to do some arranging of those. So I really hope that um, you find this helpful. I hope that this is something that can help you in your ministry as you're using ProPresenter 5, which so far is the best worship software I've found. And um, I hope it helps you go out and change eternity. Until next time, I'm Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.